Gen Alpha influencers. Of course, we are obsessed with skincare. <laughs> So we're witnessing the first chunk of grown-up iPod kids entering society. Dear younger kids and teens, can you please stop doing this? Everybody run to the battle station. The Sephora kids are coming. For years, it has been common for curious children to find and play with their parents' clothes and makeup. Now, with the rise of skincare, it's understandable to assume that along with eyeshadows and lipsticks, children are seeing parents use moisturizers and serums. So, naturally, they're going to be curious about that as well. With that being said, the bigger change seems to be the marketing behind these skincare and beauty brands. Instead of having a brand create specific products for children, the way stores create child-friendly makeup kits, for example, the same skincare brands that have been marketing to adults for years have just accepted the fact that children as young as six years old are now raiding stores like Ulta and Sephora, and the brand owners do not seem to be concerned about it at all. In fact, they seem to be welcoming them to the same products their parents use with open arms. This new Sephora craze is actually sort of a problem because a lot of the products that children are using actually aren't the safest for them, as we'll get into later. If you didn't know, big multi-million dollar retail brands incorporate do not care about you or I. They do not care about children either. What they care about most is money. <laughs> What did you say? I know, I know. It's such a hard thing to believe. I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, though. It's the truth, and I'm sure you're shocked about that. And for anyone who doesn't use or know about skincare products, you might be wondering, what's the big deal? Is this really the worst thing that kids could be doing these days? Years ago, kids were getting burnt to crisps in tanning beds, increasing their risk of skin cancer. Now kids are taking care of their skin, right? Well, not exactly in the way you think they would be. I think there will always be concerns about trends and whether or not they are good for certain age demographics, but to put it simply, one thing being bad does not automatically make the other thing good. There are many examples given as to why people are concerned for this new Sephora Kids situation. And yes, I will also get into why some people are concerned for the wrong reasons. There are some people who have such an intense hatred for tweens that they will bully them for liking anything that is currently trending, no matter no matter what it is. More on that later. As always with my videos, the further we get into this discussion, the worse things will get. This goes from kids who want unnecessary items from Sephora to certain parents who commercialize their children into influencing your children to wanting to buy products from Sephora that they do not need. There are children who barely know how to pronounce the things that they are putting on their face. Spoiler for this video, a six-year-old doesn't need anti-aging products, but I'm going to stop myself there before I get too angry too early in this video. Since the 2023 holiday began, there's been a lot of discourse around children wanting very expensive skincare items, the most popular being drunk elephants. Should they be using these products or are we overreacting with the outrage? What will be the eventual outcome of kids using skincare as young as six years old? Will there eventually be some mental and physical repercussions to this? Probably. And why are some parents pushing their children to promote these products to others? other kids. Money! Before the craze with tweens, Drunk Elephant has been a very reputable brand. I've tried a few Drunk Elephant products, and to be honest, the skincare brand is not my favorite. Now, that's not me hating on the brand. What might not work for me might work great for you. It's just not my favorite. Not to be like this lady, though, who thinks that not being able to afford luxury skincare brands is childish. Do you see all of these products right here? Mainly this one. They don't sell those products and those brands at Sephora. Sephora does not sell medical grade skincare. Drunk Elephant is not good skincare. Sol de Janeiro is for children. It's for girls in high school and middle school. But the reason why there are so many kids in Sephora is because Sephora is for kids. It's a kid's store. I'm sorry, this is the first time I've ever heard anybody say that Sephora is a kid's store. Also, 
you, I'm an adult and I love Sol de Janeiro. Their scents smell really good. I'll wear what the f I want. Unless it's the one that people are saying attracts spiders. There is a little Chester and he's so snuggly being such a good boy. You don't need these specific brands. There are a lot of other products that you can use that'll still be good for your skin and will still make your skin feel very nice. You don't require luxury brands as long as you're within the right age demographic for certain chemicals used in the products. Use whatever brand you want as long as it works for you and as long as you like it. But back to Drunk Elephant though, not all of their products are meant for kids, yet they love this brand. There's much speculation on why kids seem to be suddenly obsessed with Drunk Elephant. I've heard employees from my local store say it's because kids think that the elephant logo is cute. By the way, yes, this is a cartoon that has repetitively appeared on Drunk Elephant's YouTube channel. While I knew the brand existed, I did not know these cartoons existed until doing research for this video. With that being said, I can totally understand the comments that I've heard from employees stating that children really think the elephant is cute, that's why they want the product. Although I would argue that this is f***ing terrifying. The I've heard others say it's because of the colorful packaging. Maybe it's even from seeing their parents using the products over the years. More likely they could be seeing their favorite influencer using these products. However, when that argument comes up, I have an issue with it. TikTok isn't meant for children under the age of 13, and a lot of the children who want these products are under the age of 13. While influencers might be introducing the product to a child who stumbles upon their account when they shouldn't be on TikTok, it is the parent's responsibility to make sure that their children are not using apps that they're not the appropriate age for. And I get it, parenting is hard and monitoring every single thing their child is doing with their iPad or cell phone sounds like a nightmare, but it is your responsibility to make sure what they're doing is safe for them. And if you do find out that they have a TikTok and they're following a bunch of influencers pushing this product, maybe don't buy it for them when they ask for it. Which, by the way, this brings me to my next point. A lot of kids under the age of 13 definitely seem to be influenced by other TikTokers, which, yes, means that they are using an app that they're not supposed to be using. What's interesting is that some of the influencers who are influencing these children also seem to be under the age of 13. So how are they posting on TikTok? Well, it's technically the parents posting these videos of their children promoting these products. It's this one little loophole that we're going to dive into. We're Gen Alpha influencers. Of course we are obsessed with skincare. Influencers who are so young, they can barely pronounce the names of the items they are using. Low recipe toner. Oh yeah, this is gonna get infuriating. And just to put it bluntly, this is not due to the children. This is due to the parents commercialing them. Hi handsome, did you wake up from your nappy? Before we get ahead of ourselves, children between the ages of 6 and 12 years old seem to be raiding their Sephora stores across the nation, and so many employees have taken to TikTok to share their experiences about it. Here are a few clips from various different TikTokers. I went to Sephora today so I could use my $25 gift card, and there was a really long line. And by the time I got in line, this girl gets behind me, and she ends up like walking in front of me. And she's like, oh, are you in line? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, well, can I get in front of you? And I'm like, no. The bitch has a long line back here. And she rolls her eyes at me and gets behind me. And by the time we get closer to the cashier registers, we can like look at all the little stands with all the mini stuff. And I'm just like looking, you're not, I'm not really grabbing anything. And this girl, she has this big ass bag, by the way. She's like maybe 10 or 11 at most. She walks past me and like hits me with her back. And I turn around like, what the f And she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I was like, you can at least say excuse me. She's like, well, I tried to, but apparently you're deaf. And she gets back in line behind me after whatever she gets. And I start feeling like this box like rubbing on my back. And like I start moving around so it can stop. I obviously know it's the girl behind me. And it keeps rubbing on my back. And I turn around and I'm like, can I get some personal space? And then she was like, oh, you're just in my way. One time, this girl came in with her mom, and she was obviously very young, okay? And she came in with a screenshot of baby facial. If you do not know what baby facial is, it is an extremely strong glycolic acid peel, all right? It's, an, it's a chemical peel. So she comes in with a screenshot, and I look at her, and I'm like, how old are you? I ask. She tells me she's nine. Nine. So then I ask, have you ever used a chemical exfoliant before? She proceeds to tell me that she uses the ordinary peel mask daily. I thought kids come in with chemical burn. We didn't have a tester in there, so she helped herself. She took the plastic off one of the brand new bottles and started spraying it. So I obviously had to damage that out, and I asked her to not do it again. And that, she wasn't happy with the way I said that. Is anybody teaching their children manners anymore? This is not a tester, so we can't sell this now. Dear younger kids and teens, can you please stop doing this? to the testers inside of Ulta's and Sephora's. 
It is absolutely barbaric. It's disgusting. It's so rude. It's so disrespectful. Like, literally, who raised you guys like this? I am appalled. She goes, oh my gosh, they don't have it. Like she literally screamed it. And then they started like mixing stuff with the drunk elephant tester. Then they start opening up the packaged items that you buy and they start mixing those. The Sephora kids have reached Target. To be fair, these are just stories, they're testimonies, so take everything with a grain of salt. So some big problems a lot of people have been pointing out are parents just dropping their kids off at these stores almost as if they expect the employees to also be babysitters while they go and shop for other things. This is not new, by the way, nor is it exclusive to Sephora. When I worked in several different retail stores, parents did this, I don't want to say all the time, but they've done it more than I feel comfortable experiencing. Employees for retail jobs don't expect babysitter to be required on their resume when applying for a position at a store. More importantly, just because somebody works at a store you're shopping in doesn't mean that they're not a total stranger. You don't know if they're qualified to watch your kids or not, and even if they are qualified, if they're in the middle of doing their job and helping other customers, they can't drop everything and babysit your child while you go shopping in a different section or an entirely different store. In a store, God forbid, if anything does happen to a child, there are codes and protocols that are followed and they're taken very seriously. But with that said, you should not be using those protocols as a safety net to walk off without your child and go shopping. You have no idea who could be shopping around in these stores. Employees are not your personal security. And you think that would be common sense, but parents doing this is more common than you would imagine. Number two, the unsupervised children are claimed to be aggressive, rude, invasive, and just overall feral. Screaming at employees and other shoppers, ruining products, screaming at their parents to buy them items when the parents actually are there. A reminder, this isn't every child that shops in Sephora. This is just a very common claim made by other shoppers and employees. Number three, claims are made that parents just drop hundreds to even thousands of dollars on skincare products for their kids who don't even need the product to begin with. Her mom was like, do you really need two of the same ones? That's like $80 each. She was like, mom, I need it. And she starts flipping out and her mom was like, oh my God. Whatever, her mom buys it. Her mom goes, can you carry the bag? I'm gonna go shopping. Cause we're in clothes. She was probably gonna go get something for herself. And the daughter goes, why do I have to carry it? She snatches the bag and goes on. And I was like, oh my God. I'm not gonna say too much because I kind of like my job and I want to keep it, but they are out of control. This girl pulls out her phone. Looks like it was either the 13, 14, or 15 Pro Max. She goes, Mom, where are you? We're about to check out. In that exact tone. Next thing that I hear is, I need your card. Hurry up. This is embarrassing. In like the rudest tone ever. If I talked to my mama like that, I would have no teeth in my mouth. But right as they get to the register, we were still in line. Like we were just one person behind them. Guess the mom of the girl with the basket walks in. As the Sephora worker is ringing like the girl stuff up, the mom goes, uh-uh, stop scanning, please. Stop scanning, please. Literally just like that. The mom goes, this is absurd. You girls can pick three a piece out of this pot. The little girl with the basket looked at her mom and I'm pretty sure everyone in, everyone in Sephora could hear her goes, I want it all. Not that loud, but it was loud. They give in and buy their children the expensive item from Sephora or they compromise and they tell them you can get one of these two very expensive items. Not to be that guy and say, you know, when it was me, I do want to say that growing up, if I had given my mother a hard time and embarrassed her like that in public, I would be leaving that store empty-handed and that would be the least of my problems after that situation. Allowing your children to act like this with zero consequence is going to set them up to act like this continuously as they get older. And that is a terrifying thought. The 10 year old little girl spending their Christmas money at Sephora epidemic is so much bigger than that because in 2010, Apple released its very first iPad. So we're witnessing the first chunk of grown up iPad kids entering society. And no wonder they're so rude. They grew up on iPads. They were not properly socialized. And number five, kids wanting specific products such as retinol that could potentially be harmful to their skin. And yes, retinol could be used for younger skin if they have issues like acne, but many of the children who want the 
these products are too young to even have acne. We're talking about kids who are six, seven, eight years old. Kids who just want the product because they see other people using it. But they also feel like they need these products when they are between the ages of six to 10 years old. At that age, their skin is the most youthful it ever will be. And there's a lot of theories that by using products at such a young age, they will do more damage to their skin than helping it. Seriously, if you look at the description of these glow drops everyone is going crazy for, sure, they give you a bronzy summer glow that anybody at any age might like, but if you look closer, it also talks about reducing fine lines and wrinkles. What child needs to worry about that? After tons of criticism from both concerned parents and employees, Drunk Elephant finally responded. There's an article written on Beauty Independent, and right off the bat, I already dislike the title. Drunk Elephant says many of its products are designed for kids. This brand has been around for years, and kids just so happen to recently start infiltrating their market, which is increasing demands for Drunk Elephant products. Where they get designed for kids in this article is from a post Drunk Elephant has made on their Instagram. Can kids and tweens use Drunk Elephant? Yes, many of our products are designed for all skin, including kids and tweens. To be clear, this is worded differently than the way the statement actually was written, but I'm still not a fan of the way the original statement started off. In my opinion, it seems that they were very hasty to say yes instead of saying some products are safe and some aren't. However, the second sentence does say, First, I would stay away from our more potent products that include acids and retinols. Their skin does not need these ingredients quite yet. They don't go into details as to why children should stay away from products with acids and retinols in it. Instead, they say, ah, they just don't need them yet. Not not only do most kids not need retinol, but on top of that, it could be harmful for most of them. But this company dances around that in this post, and I find that to be extremely irresponsible and deceptive. They then provide a list of child safe products, which we will get into in a minute, but they don't give any information on the products that are not child safe, which I personally think that this was allegedly done to take advantage of ignorant customers. Hear me out. With products that have a long list of ingredients on the back. You're reading the ingredient list as you're in the store with your child who's getting fussy and demanding that they want this product and begging you for it. And the store is crowded. The line is really long. You're trying to get out. Are you going to sit there and read every single item on that ingredient list? You should absolutely 100% before you make the decision to buy it for your child. But realistically speaking, do you think that every single parent in this situation will? It would be much easier to determine whether or not this is one of the safe or not safe products if they included a list of products that were unsafe because when you leave a list of products that are safe but don't list everything it leaves a gray area of well is this a new product that came out maybe i misread and didn't see this one it would be more beneficial to have a list of products that were unsafe in fact than it would be to have a list of products that were safe because you would know directly what to stay away from and you'd be more likely to remember it again this is just my speculation but I personally believe with the way that this was written that this company is banking off of parents' ignorance when shopping in stores with children. At the end of the day, they know that some parents will not read all of that. They know that their parents will just try to get out of the store. That's my personal speculation. I could be wrong. I'm not saying that as fact. I'm just saying that as somebody who doesn't trust this and who also understands how consumers work. Like I said, should every parent be checking the ingredients list before they allow their kid to put this on their face? Yes, absolutely 100%. But will all parents do that? No. And whether or not that's the parent's fault or the company's, it's ultimately going to end up affecting the child. Speaking of the list of products that are safe for children to use, let's take a look at that list. Here's a list of our products that are safe for kids and tweens to use. And honestly, to spare your ears from me mispronouncing half of them, I'm just going to let you read these up on the screen. One thing to note is those really popular bronzing drops are listed on here along with various other products. Speaking of which, let's just take a look at the first product on this list, which I assume is called Bestie. So it's a jelly cleanser. Let's take a look at the ingredients. It seems for the major ingredients, they give a description on what it does and why it's in the product. But look at how long and detailed this is. Do you think every parent buying this stuff is going to sit in an aisle at a crowded store and 
read all of this, look into what it is, and when they don't know what ingredient they're reading, they look it up on their phone to see if it's okay for their kid to use. Of course, they should. Again, I'm not saying it's right if they don't do that, but to say that every parent will do this is absolutely unrealistic. It's like when you buy a new product or sign up for something and there's a 50-page terms of agreement form that they expect you to read over and click I agree at the end. To expect the majority of people to actually do that is extremely unrealistic. But going back to this cleanser, what's interesting is that this cleanser does show acids in the ingredient lists. That's another thing they left out in this Instagram post. There are tons of different acids used in different products. They don't even try to specify what kind of acids are safe and what kinds aren't and what the difference between them are. The only way I would assume that this would be a safe acid to use on the skin without knowing what it actually is, is by trusting the brand when they say it is safe to use. But to be completely honest, I personally don't trust everything that this brand is saying right now. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't either. That's just my personal opinion. I'm not going to go over every single product on this list, by the way. Here is the list once again, in case you want to look it up. There are a lot of ingredients to read, and believe it or not, I can't even pronounce half of them. There are some things on here that I've never even read in my life, which honestly isn't uncommon with skincare products. I feel like to fully understand the back of the bottle when it comes to skincare or any other type of product that has a lot of chemicals in it, you either need to be an esthetician or you need to be a chemist to just know all of these things off the top of your head. It would have to take extensive research on each individual ingredient for me to understand every single thing that is in this bottle and what it does to your skin. One has an ingredient list so long that you actually have to scroll to read everything. And to elaborate further, I'm not saying that everything that has a long ingredient list is bad. I'm not trying to be one of those crunchy almond moms that freaks out if something has more than six ingredients in it. I'm pointing all of this out to remind you how unrealistic it is to expect a parent to quickly gather all of the information they can to decide whether or not that this is something that their child should be putting on their face. I do want to take a look at one more product that is very, very popular and is on the list of safe for kids, which are these bronzing drops. The very popular bronzing drops that children of all ages on TikTok seem to love. The second ingredient on this list, by the way, well, I want to say it's shocking, but I'm not surprised at all. Metrixyl 3000 Peptide Blend, which it also states helps reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles while promoting elasticity and resilience. On a website called Dr. Kinsella Skin, I hope I was pronouncing that right, the website says, states, Metrixyl 3000 is a synthetic peptide and a very popular ingredient in anti-aging skincare due to its ability to promote collagen formation. It effectively manages the aging signs and helps reverse premature aging. That definitely sounds like something a child and a tween should be using in their bronzing drops. Metrixyl 3000 mimics the ability of naturally occurring peptides to promote collagen and elastin protection, I hope I'm saying that right, which helps to even out the skin tone, making the skin look firmer and and younger. So it might not be retinol, but it's still an anti-aging product. This is in those bronzing drops that children, again, as young as six, are going crazy over. I don't know if that's actually safer than retinol, but I feel confident in saying that it's probably not necessary to be adding into a child's skincare routine. So I wanted to see for myself if the Sephoras in my area have been decimated. Let's take a little field trip. I want to let you know right away that going into these stores, I did not film anything. I did not pull out my camera to try and record kids shopping or anything like that. All I did was take pictures of the displays for me to share my experience with you. First up is Ulta. It seemed like they had recently cleaned the display when I saw it, but you could tell that some of the testers have been used heavily. There was goop dried up up on some of the bottles. It was pretty gross. When I was there, I didn't see anybody using these testers, so I don't know who made them look like this. It could have just been an over usage of them throughout the entire day by multiple people, or it could have been kids making a mess. I don't know because I didn't see when it became like this, and when I was in that store, it was pretty uncrowded. This location also had tons of those bronzing drops on display right up by the front of the store. At the time, I didn't think that 
to take a picture of it because I didn't realize how fast they sold out. When I was going in there looking at all of the products, I knew more about the fact that kids were destroying them than I did about each product that was selling out so fast. My best guess would be that they had gotten a shipment the same day that I went to that particular location, but maybe it's also because it was Ulta and not Sephora. I really don't know. The second location, a Sephora inside of Kohl's. This was surprisingly the most interesting location despite usually being the least crowded. This Sephora had taken the Drunk Elephant moisturizer bottle and put it high enough where a kid probably couldn't reach it. They also put a sign on it saying not to mix the products. One thing kids really like to do is make these skincare smoothies, which is mixing a ton of products together before putting it on their face, and they usually mix it all up on top of this particular moisturizer bottle. So I get why this was done. I just have not seen anything like this in any other Sephora, Ulta, or even online for that matter. If I remember correctly, this was also the only Sephora that I saw any kids at, but the kids here were with their mother, and it seemed like the mom was really the one shopping. It didn't seem like the kids were running around the store being disrespectful or anything like that. It was pretty normal, and it was pretty quiet. There were no disruptions. With that being said, I did want to point out that it is good to see that not every parent out there is allowing their kid to just run around the Ulta, Sephora stores. There are parents that are bringing their kids in the stores, but they are watching them and making sure that they are being supervised and aren't just dumping them off and letting them do what they want. It's important to point out that not every parent is like that. The last location was a bigger Sephora inside a shopping mall. I went to both Sephoras on a Saturday evening. While this one was definitely more crowded than the Kohl's Sephora, the drunk elephant section was surprisingly in better condition. This Sephora seemed to have a lower stock of drunk elephant products for sale though. There was also less testers out, and again, a bit of product was leaking out of the testers that were available, which is kind of gross, I'm not gonna lie. There were actually more people pointing out the drunk elephant section and going, oh my god, that's the brand that all the kids are going crazy for right now, than there were kids going crazy over it. I will say that that area had a lot less product in it, so maybe throughout the day people were buying it, but when I was in there, again, I didn't really see too much going on. And again, this was on a Saturday when the mall is usually most crowded. Maybe it was the time of day I went there, maybe it was the location I was at. That's not to say nothing crazy has never happened. Obviously something has had to happen for this. <laughs> sign to be put on that moisturizer, but when I was there, I had nothing insane to report other than the testers looking kind of gross. Speaking of going to stores to try and see if what's being said online is true, I've seen some TikTokers do their own investigating in a really awful way. So remember in the beginning of the previous section when I said going into these stores, I had no intention of filming and I had just only taken pictures of the display? Yeah, that was obviously intentional. I had no intention of whipping my phone out and trying to film a bunch of strangers minding their own business while shopping, especially if it was a bunch of kids. And if anybody did act absolutely insane while I was there, I would have just mentioned it the way that I'm talking about this right now without filming it. As another creator, Funky Frogbait, has pointed out, I'll link their video below, many people have no problem filming crowds of children at Sephora and posting it to TikTok. Mind you, in these videos, the kids don't seem to be doing anything wrong. They were just existing. The original TikTok videos didn't censor out the kids' faces either, and it's not like they were just trying to record a product and a kid was flipping floating around in the background somewhere either. The full intention was to show the kids crowding Sephora stores, and that just feels like a step too far in my opinion. Now, to give the benefit of the doubt, I don't think everybody who had done this did so with creepy intentions. I think it was more of a decision where they weren't thinking and it was a very stupid thing to do, or at the very least, people just trying to document and validate all of the stories that people have been coming out with. But again, you could do that without invading the privacy of others, especially young kids. Even if this was out of sheer stupidity and a lack of rational thinking on behalf of the person doing this, if I was a mother of a child who was in a store and somebody came up and started recording them, I don't care what the reason would be, I would... 
I believe that the true reason people are doing this is to record crowds of kids at Sephora with the intention to shame kids whether or not they realize it. For some reason, when something becomes popularized by kids, especially young girls, it becomes massively hated by everyone else in society. This is a pattern that has repeated itself for years, by the way. This isn't new. Right now, the focus seems to be mostly on this skincare situation and the Stanley Cups, which I've already done a video about. The sad reality is that this new generation of children are exposed to social media at such a young age, and childhoods are becoming shorter and shorter as kids are thrown into a world where they are expected to go from being toddlers to teenagers with no in between. The days of being a preteen are fizzling out, and this is something that we have yet to see the full effects of, in my opinion, both physically and mentally. But as the new generation of children gets older, we are starting to get a glimpse of how they may start acting in their later years. And some of these kids are demonstrating things like aggression, lack of empathy, a strong desire for consumption at such an early age, and many other worrying traits. But I want to make it clear that while yes, children allegedly going feral in makeup stores and screaming at their parents should face some sort of consequence, there are so many factors responsible for this outcome. Yet so many are overlooking all of those factors and are just just putting all of the blame on the children. Again, this seems like something that has happened for years at this point. It's just getting worse. And there's a lot to blame on that here, such as social media, society, parents, corporations that really don't care about how young they're pushing their products to as long as they're getting money, and so much more. And what's sad is on the other side of the situation, I also hear stories of so many parents who have well-behaved children and they take their children out in public and receive a lot of negative treatment just for having their child with them, even if they're behaving appropriately. As I've previously mentioned, not every parent is allowing their child to act up and be ruthless in public places, so it's very unfair to treat every single parent as if their kid is going to do that before it even happens, because some kids are very well behaved. In my personal experience going out in public, I've seen kids act completely wild, and I've seen other kids act like little angels who are just existing and are a joy for their parents at that time. And I get it, kids are kids, and and they're going to be overwhelming at times. That's part of being a child. And parenting is hard. It is really difficult for people to 100% of the time be able to handle that. And I think it's very important to understand that there are some parents who are responsible at it. We shouldn't be treating every single parent out there as if they are not. I suppose my conclusion for this section of the video is if you are a parent who is allowing your child to shop at Sephora, please keep a close eye eye on them. Please teach them to be respectful towards anybody that they encounter. Please don't just leave them in the store. Be present with them and set boundaries for them that they must understand so that they do not act demanding or aggressive. Also, if you are somebody who is shopping in public, please don't just whip out your phone and start recording random strangers' children just to get some likes on TikTok and say, oh my god, look, the kids are there. They're at the Sephora because that's just fucking weird. Before we get on to the more enraging stuff, I want to share one more thing that left me feeling a little bit hopeful. When going over everything, I found one video on TikTok that gave a really good example of not just the way that kids should shop at Sephora, but what they should get from Sephora if their parents take them there. So if any parents are out there, this is a really great clip and a great example. Do I think kids should be hanging out at Sephora, trashing testers, and buying retinol? Absolutely not. But what I did do is take my niece Nine and my daughter to what? Sephora and taught them how to appropriately interact with testers as <laughs> well as talking about what their skin could benefit from, and it was not retinol. We grabbed sunscreen. Everybody loves to go to Sephora and try the fragrance walls. Yeah, we that. talked about how do you try fragrance? You get a tester, spray it, do a sniff, oh, waft it, so wait a few oh. minutes. We talked about what was not appropriate, and lip plumper was not on that list. Mm -hmm. Honestly, of course, these kids are walking around trashing testers. They spent so much time in lockdown, not able to interact with the public. I think this is definitely a learning opportunity for parents as well as other guardians to show how do you interact and how do you behave like a decent human being 
in stores when testers are involved. So these are the things that we got, hand sanitizer, sunscreen, two different kinds of lip balm. And honestly, this was really fun and educational. And by the way, this is not to be compared to another example that was going viral on TikTok where a parent was with their children and had them stage an interaction with a Sephora employee. I didn't like that one. Speaking of which, there is a special breed of parent. The ones who push their children into being social media influencers, some who are too young to even know what the word influencer even means. We're Gen Alpha Influencers. Of course my favorite stores are Sephora and Ulta. We're Gen Alpha Influencers. Of course we wear a headband when we're doing our Get Ready With Me's. Many have claimed the demand of skincare products has been on the rise in youth after children of celebrities, such as the Kardashians, have started using them. That may have been the starting point, but I think it's gotten worse with a lot of other influencers on TikTok. Looking into this topic, I saw a video by a YouTuber who goes by Kiki Chanel. I'll leave her video linked in the description below as well, she did an excellent job covering this situation. She pointed something out that made me trip and fall down a rabbit hole that is much darker than you'd think. And this involves mothers who push their very young children into being influencers and essentially commercializing them to get free products and brand deals and a whole bunch of other really concerning stuff. A lot of the things you see us use in our videos are gifted products that we received from the brands. This might just be worse than family vlogging content. Not any specific family vlogger, by the way, just the genre itself. In Kiki Chanel's video, she had pointed out a lot of examples that have left me feeling very concerned. I will be redacting the account names and I will be blurring out any faces of young children in this section of the video because these kids are so young, they probably don't even understand what's truly happening. The first TikTok mentioned was an account seemingly run by a mother of a nine-year-old, and the nine-year-old was reviewing a skincare brand called Bubble. The amount of products in this skincare routine is so unnecessary for a child of this age. She also uses tools like a battery-operated exfoliating brush, and I remember years ago when those types of brushes used to be really popular. I don't know what the specific brand of this brush is, but I do know that those tools in general could be very harsh on anybody's skin, including adults, if their skin is sensitive. The other thing that Kiki Chanel pointed out was that this kid also had acrylic nails. Nail polish is one thing. I think they even have kid-friendly nail polish, but when it comes to acrylic nails for a child, I've actually never even thought of this until this video because I've never seen it before in real life, a child with acrylic nails. After looking this up, they actually are fairly dangerous for young kids to have. A mom of three has been slammed online for letting her 10-year-old daughter wear acrylic nails. Whitney, age 30, recently issued a warning on TikTok against school children wearing fake nails after her daughters became infected. However, other users have been left scratching their heads as they wonder why she ever allowed them in the first place. In 2018, Dr. Nora Nugent, I hope I'm saying that name right, a plastic surgeon at Queen Victoria Hospital in West Sussex warned British parents about allowing their children to get acrylic. She said that some children under the age of 12 required surgery to repair their damaged nail beds. We would advise children to use nail varnish in place of artificial nails. It is much safer, can be just as fun and colorful, and save them from potentially having an operation. And by the way, a TikTok was linked in this article, but I have to blur it out because it's fairly graphic. So yeah, acrylic nails should definitely definitely not be worn by children. Now, I know a lot of girls get acrylic nails for prom, but that's usually when they're like 16, 17 years old. I didn't even start getting acrylic nails until I was in my early 20s. Back to the other TikTok though, Kiki Chanel, the YouTuber who shined a light onto this to begin with, vocalized her suspicions of this being an attempt to get noticed by the brand Bubble, which seems to be the thing nowadays, TikTokers milking tons of brands until they get free stuff or even sponsorships. Hey guys, it's Adriana, and today I'm gonna be trying Bubble. These are my day and these are my night. This night I'm gonna be using these. Bubble actually commented on this video and the mom and daughter TikTok account later posted an update video in response to that comment with more Bubble skincare. The mom bragged about how the first video went viral too. So since her last video that went viral, she one doesn't have any nails <laughs> and she has a little bit more products. Now, I know a lot of you have been asking where we got bubble. We've gotten them from Ulta and Walmart. Walmart has a lot of bubble. So go check those. So does Ulta. 
Yes. Social media is a disease, I swear to God. Oh, she also bragged about her child making it on the mainstream news during a report about the concerns with young kids in skincare. There are other TikToks where the mom is recording this little girl opening packages of different products, which aren't all skincare, by the way, and it just feels like parents are exploiting their little ones for free stuff from different brands. There's one TikTok of her child reviewing these vitamin powders, and another post about another brand that thank the brand in the description, which is a really big red flag. Usually when somebody says, thank you, insert brand name here, instead of, I bought this product from brand name, that usually implies that that product was sent to them. With the ways that these videos have been made and the way that the descriptions have been written, while I cannot confirm it as fact, I do speculate that brands have been sending them products and that they are also trying to get other brands to send them products as well. And again, to be fair, I have not seen any videos where they have outright said that a brand has sent them these products. This is my assumption based off of the context that they have given in their video descriptions and the way that they speak about the products in their videos. Some brands will send influencers PR, which are basically free product with the hope, but usually not by requirement, that they will be reviewed online. This is different than a sponsorship where you are paid to review or shout out a product. By law, you are required to disclose if you are being sponsored by a brand because sponsorships equal payment. But I don't believe you have to do that with PR because the review is free and the product is free. They're just giving you the product with the hope that you do a review, but it's not necessarily required. Despite the product that they send you being free, it's more considered a gift. It's not a form of payment, at least as far as I am aware when it comes to PR packaging. Now, with that being said, this adds weight to my beliefs that they are, in fact, getting PR sent to them. In other words, the mom may allegedly be using her child's reviews to get free stuff from different brands, which I personally believe would count as exploitation. Also, it's not only shame on the mom's behalf in this situation, this is also on the brands allegedly endorsing her as well. That includes the brand Bubble, who has commented on one of their videos supporting it. So after this mother has experienced criticism for essentially using her child to get free stuff from TikTok reviews, what do you think her response was? Do you think she A. Reflected on the concerns and took the videos down? B. Took another step into influencer lifestyle with an apology video? Or C. Posted a TikTok making light of the situation disregarding all concerns and doubling down on their actions? If you guessed C, you are correct. Your prize is the knowledge of an even worse TikTok account. The next TikTok account, one with over 4 million followers, by the way, focuses on a mother and two of her young daughters that I believe are twins. These two girls are seven years old and are seen using tons of skincare products, including Drunk Elephant, and doing Get Ready With Me videos, which are videos where they record the process of getting ready to go somewhere and or do something. For my sweet, sweet viewers out there watching right now, thinking, oh, that's so wholesome. They're doing Get Ready videos with their mom and she just loves them so much and she's so proud of them and this is such a sweet family. Please just shut the video off now, please. I, I don't want to make your day worse than it already is. It's about to get worse. This is not as cute as you think it might be. Let's take a look and listen to this video as it plays out. Again, I'm redacting the account names and the faces, etc. Get rid of me only using my new glow recipe, baby. First up, I'm so excited for this one. Glow recipe toner. This is so smooth, guys. You have to get it. Guys, these are my perfumes from Sephora. Like, OMG. I'm obsessed. I'm gonna use these, like all the time are my two preppy bags. First, squish well, second, preppy. I'm gonna store my skincare in this. And then here's my green hand sanitizer. I've been wanting this, I freaked out when I got this. This is my sugar scrub for my lips. Like, my lips need this. These little girls sound like they are commercial actors by the way that they are talking about these products. As a reminder, they are seven years old. Hey really feels comfortable in front of the camera and likes to perform. She's seen other people's get ready with me's and a lot of times tries to mimic or do the same kind of attitude that these older kids have. And that's not how she acts 
on a regular daily basis. So one, she's admitting that she's letting her children use TikTok and see other influencers doing this, even though they're under the required age to use TikTok, as well as most other apps that involve influencers. But I'm not buying that she's just getting this type of personality from seeing other people do it. This is entirely speculation on my behalf, but I personally think that the mother might also be coaching them into acting this way to promote these products. Maybe coaching them involves showing them videos, instructing them how to act in their videos, but I do not think that these children are just acting like this on their own. You guys, these Barbie pink Stanleys are under $30 in the TikTok shop! Go get them! You can see her in the background of some of these videos as well, and I'm under the assumption that she is also the one editing these TikToks. If you go far back enough, this account shows the same little girls from when they were about three or four years old, just beginning to develop their motor skills. Even back then, she was using her kids to show off products, but at least at that point, they were still toys, not skincare. Not that it makes it that much better. Also, she would do a lot of videos, turning them into influencers before they could even develop significant motor skills. Hey girls, we have another question. What is your favorite vegetable? Um, yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday! Happy birthday! So we're going to start doing some birthday shout outs. Comment with your birthday and if we pick you on your day, we'll do a birthday shout out video. Recreate some of the most memorable moments from Bluey with Bluey's tree playset. There's a ladder to have your figures climb up, slide down the slide, and even relax in the hammock. This two-sided playset is perfect for my twins who often like to recreate their favorite moments from Bluey. Imagine being such a young child that you don't really comprehend an audience or sponsorships or anything like that, but you get this giant magical playset of your favorite cartoon, but you can't play with it until you shoot a commercial for mommy's TikTok. Sure, at first that might sound pretty harmless and a fair trade. You get this brand new toy and you just have to film this 60 second commercial for your mom's TikTok account, but then that becomes the norm and all of a sudden every single item you own cannot be given to you unless you show it off to mommy's TikTok followers. And then you start to learn that everything you get has strings attached to it and you later learn that everything in life is transactional. That's what you're teaching your f***ing kids. Again, comparing this to family vloggers who I also criticize for basically filming their children the second they come out of the womb. What I'm about to say isn't to defend family vloggers, by the way. I still do not like that genre of content. But at the very least, I'd like to assume that even family vloggers don't train their children this much for content. When I'm watching this, I feel like I'm watching a dog do tricks. A family vlog might be a 10 minute long video where a mom takes a minute or so to talk about a household product as a sponsor, and then they go back to filming more family content. The TikToks are condensed and centered around the products that they are either getting for free, such as PR, or using as bait to get attention from brands with the hopes that they will eventually get PR, or in some cases, getting a full sponsorship. In these TikToks, they use their children as props and commercialize them to show off the product. They can't even have a regular Christmas without the mother posting a TikTok from each of them, showing off each item they received as if it were a haul video, which if you don't know is a video where people buy a bunch of stuff and show it off. On top of that, mommy's getting a divorce and on the same account with these little kids, she's sharing all of the messy details about it in multi-part TikTok videos. <sighs> Five days ago, I found out that my husband, who I've been with for almost 14 years now, has been having an affair. I've been trying to figure out how to process this. Um, and honestly, having a little divorce diary, I think, is the best for me and maybe it can help someone else too. Discussing how she was cheated on and even bragging about being in my divorce era. Okay, there are two things I've been wanting to do and now that I'm in my divorce era, I really want to do them even more. Normally, I wouldn't be against something like that, but this is the same page that you are advertising your young children on. But it's okay because she gets them involved. So I need you guys to help me decide. Should I cut my hair? the old chopperoni everyone's doing, or should we get a new puppy? By the way, she did get them each a puppy, and I genuinely hope that those dogs are well taken care of and weren't just for the purpose of social media. Anyway, she also was called out by Kiki and others for claiming that the drunk elephant bronze drops are hers, yet there are other TikTok videos with her kids using them. Okay, is this yours? No. Whose is it? No. When can you use it? 
um, when my mom says I can. By the way, the description of this TikTok says you are never too young to start a healthy habit. I disagree. I think a child as young as the one in this video does not need a multi-step skincare routine or a fridge full with skincare products because yes, she has that. The only time it might be acceptable at that age to have multi-steps to your skincare routine is if they have something that requires a dermatologist. Anyway, after posting that video, people in their comments called her out for posting this video over a week prior. Time for my smoothie. One drop in the center. Mix, mix, mix. So I'm like so excited to meet my teacher. Then there's this other video where she takes her kids spray tanning for a upcoming dance recital and you could tell she already knows she's gonna get a lot of for this. So she ends up having the person who works at the tanning salon explain how safe this is and how they have other parents come in with their children for things like pageants. Vince first dance competitions tomorrow, time to get a spray tan. Before y'all come at me, let's talk to the professional and make sure this is safe for children. Okay, Hannah, is this safe for my girls to get a spray tan? Totally safe. I have a ton of little dancers and pageant girls that come in all the time. It's perfect for kids, pregnant moms, What's also interesting is yet another quick Google search showing that it is advised for young children to not use spray tanning. But that's okay because they also just posted another video advertising a self tanner that you can get from their TikTok shop. And yes, they get commission from this. There's a little stamp at the very bottom of the video stating that it's eligible for commission, meaning that if you buy the item from their TikTok shop, they get money from it. What's infuriating to me is that anybody with common sense who rightfully calls this out in the comments gets flooded with replies saying, well, they have to wear self-tanner because they're dancers. When they're up on stage, the lights are really bright, so they have to be tanned. If this is the norm for seven-year-old dancers, why is nobody questioning this? In the beginning of this video, I talked about how things like tanning beds are really unsafe, and I'd assume that they were used much more in the past than they are today. And a spray tan is a much healthier alternative, but it's been documented that professionals have questions the safety of the ingredients in spray tans and self tanners for children. And I'm talking about medical professionals, not somebody sitting behind a booth whose job it is to get business for a tanning salon. But for the argument's sake, let's eliminate all of the concerns and assume that this is 100% without a doubt safe for anybody at any age to use these tanning products. You are still inflicting the idea to your seven year old that they are not good enough as they are and need to change themselves before they can go up on stage and dance in front of people. And listen, I understand dance competitions are pretty common. I'm sure there's tons of kids out there who are doing the same exact thing. So I know this is more than just this particular person. This seems like a bigger issue and I haven't heard anybody talking about it. Where this does involve this creator in particular, however, is the fact that she decided to use her children as props once again to boost affiliate links in her TikTok shop. At some point, I suppose that this TikTok mom has gotten enough backlash to start responding to criticism. The girls are only seven. Why do you let them use so much skincare? The simple answer here is that they really don't use a lot of skincare. Now, do they have a lot of skincare? Yes. My motto in life has always been do the things that people consider high maintenance so that you can be low maintenance. So she basically uses talking about herself and bragging about all the things she gets done on her own face to justify her giving her children so much skincare to use. So let me give you an example. I get my eyebrows laminated and some might consider that high maintenance, but to me it makes it low maintenance because now to get ready, all I have to do is that. I also go and get my lashes lifted and tinted every two months and that is so that I can just do this and I'm ready. So you make the initial high maintenance investment up front so that your daily life can be low maintenance. So that is what I'm teaching my girls. Taking care of your skin up front early in life will help your skin stay beautiful and you can be low maintenance later in life. This is maybe something you should be teaching a 19 or 20 year old, not a six year old, but who the hell am I? Just somebody who thinks that maybe six and seven years old is a little bit too young to start thinking about being older with wrinkles. Maybe you should be teaching your kids that even when they do become older and start to get wrinkles, that they will still be appreciated and beautiful and just as much of a human being as when they didn't have that. And maybe also allow them to have a fucking childhood. I am begging you, please let your kids be kids. Let them enjoy childhood. They can't even do that, honestly, because even when you do get them things that they would like and that might be child related or anything at all, such as Christmas gifts, you can't just give them Christmas gifts. You have to have them film a Christmas haul for their TikToks. 
Let's do my Christmas haul. Is these pajama pants. I'm obsessed, like, OMG. Ah! It's my hair clip, and it's so preppy. Like, I'm gonna wear it to school. Like, I'm obsessed. Look, <laughs> so much lip gloss. Love Summer Friday. Like, I love it. I'm obsessed. In doing so, they are also influencing other young children to desire these products that they do not need. The mom also shared one of her twin girls' crushes to her audience of over 4 million followers. They showed his picture, shared his name, and everything. Obviously, I'm blurring all of that out here. Were his parents okay with this? If his parents did know about this and were okay with it, which I'd like to hope that they did and are, then fair enough on that end, but this is still really concerning and uncomfortable, especially with what we're going to get into next. You might think this is the peak when it comes to this issue. Unfortunately, this gets even darker. What else could we pile on? Is there any more shit we could pile on to the top of the outcome of this case? Is it possible? For those of you who do not know, you can like videos on TikTok with a little heart, but you can also favorite them. And for a while, favoring a video would give you anonymity. By the way, I have no idea why TikTok made this decision. It seems pointless in my opinion. You should just be able to like videos and that's it. I don't see a point in having two options, but that's just my opinion. It would not notify the creator that your account favored their video, at least up until recently, if I am correct. There were a lot of favorites on the videos that were centered around the young children's TikToks. Thousands and thousands of people were favoring these videos. A few months to about a year ago, there were tons of creators making videos about this one TikToker in particular for this very reason. How the amount of favorites were really high and that it was a cause for concern because a lot of speculation goes to the fact that it could potentially be creeps that are favoring these videos, again, to hide behind that anonymity, at least as far as we are aware, if it hasn't changed to where they are now being notified that such and such is favoring the videos. There are so many other accounts that are doing this as well, whether it be parents pushing their young kids to promote these brands or older siblings, it's not just exploitative, but also dangerous. And as we've already seen many times when the parent is criticized, they don't take it seriously and they have the child chime in on jokes about the situation. Before we look at this video clip, I just want you to know that this was taken from an entirely different TikTok account, and I don't want this to be taken out on the child. You can see the mother in the background in the beginning. This is not the responsibility of the kid. The kid was either coached by the parent to do this or heavily encouraged by them. Again, don't send any hate or anything to this TikTok account. I'm obviously redacting as much information as I can. I'm just using this as an example for exactly what I was just talking about. You guys, it has been brought to my attention that my Get Ready With Me's have been surfaced online, where I've told my interactions with adults in Sephora. I didn't mean to take the bronzing drops from someone that actually needed them. I just didn't want to be pale. <laughs> Truly sorry from the bottom of my heart and the depth of my soul. Good luck trying to get me to apologize again, Mom. From the concerns of skincare being age appropriate to the virality of brands like Drunk Elephant, one thing that stands out is the parents should really be researching what is and isn't okay to be using on their children. Don't just take the brand's word at face value. Young six-year-olds do not need anti-aging, wrinkle-preventing glow drops, and it also might be best to keep them off of social media as much as possible. Most social media apps have age requirements for a reason, whether the user is just viewing TikTok TikToks or actually creating them. Parents who use their children to potentially get PR or hope to get PR packages, again, being free product from other brands, just stop. If you want PR that bad, just make yourself the focus of the video. Do the reviews yourself. It's so sad that kids have to learn about skincare and skin imperfections before they're even focused on their ABCs. And yes, I know I'm focusing on the younger side of this demographic because it is ages 6 to 10, 11, 12, as you would be called tweens in those later ages, but it really, really frustrates me because there are parents out there that are pushing their very, very young children into creating this type of 
content, and there are other young children of the same age demographic that are consuming this content and feeling the need to do the same thing. And it's all in the name of commercializing your kid to hopefully get free skincare, whether you are using it or the child. This is sick and selfish. You're not only damaging your own children, but you're doing damage to other people's children as well. And to be completely transparent, I'm not against all skincare for kids. There actually are kid-friendly products like sunscreens and lip balms. I definitely disagree with the usage of harsh anti-aging products on extremely young skin and making young children think that their skin isn't good enough. It's so sad to just see how childhood is dying. We live in a world where we want kids to grow up, but we don't want people to be too old. It's extremely depressing and almost dystopian to see how this is being pushed onto younger and younger kids. I'll leave today's video with something that has always stuck with me. A few years back, I had a sociology professor that made a very impactful statement in one of her lectures, which was one simple sentence. We treat aging like a disease in this country. And I couldn't agree more. Like I said, children are expected to reach a certain age, and then it's almost like we have this pressure to look that same way forever when that is entirely unrealistic. Aging after a certain point is seemed as this shameful, ugly, hideous thing, and that is so sad, and it's getting to the point where the second that somebody sees a fine line, a wrinkle, or even a gray hair, it's almost like they're being treated as if they are useless to society. Which, by the way, I hope everybody watching this right now understands that isn't the case. Getting older is a natural part of life, and it's unfortunate that companies don't want you to see it that way because they want to push their products onto you, even if that means going to younger and younger customers. And if you don't believe me, well, people are now telling children as young as six years old that in order to preserve their skin as long as possible, they need to be using 10-step skincare routines. So that way they look as young as possible as long as possible. I have no idea what type of world this is turning into. All I know is that it's absolutely horrible. Thank you so much if you made it all the way to the end of this video. Thank you so much to everybody supporting me over on Patreon, and thank you so much if you've ever given me a super thanks. With that being said, I will see you in the next video where hopefully my voice doesn't go out from ranting too much. See you later.